Recently, people have been saying that EV charging has gotten more expensive ever since companies like Electrify Canada switched from time-based to usage-based billing. Meaning before, you could charge by the minute. Now, they charge you by the kilowatt hour, so basically usage. Um, it is good in some ways, worse in others, and we're going to explore those uh, benefits and drawbacks when we get there. And we are actually going to a Electrify Canada location in Red Deer, Alberta. Why that place? Simply because I was there before when it was still time-based and now it is kilowatt hour based so I can compare how much a similar charge would cost based on both systems and then kind of come with a conclusion at the end to see if uh, it is really more expensive and if that expense will actually translate into benefits for us as EV drivers in the future. We have arrived, we plugged in and now we are charging. Um, by the way, I have to say that this location is really, really nice. Um, the way that they designed it and all pull-ins with enough room here if you're pulling a trailer, especially there's one right there that you can just pull into here with a trailer and then you don't need to unplug. So if you have one of those nice lightning trucks, um, you're able to charge quite nicely here at, at uh, this location. So being in the middle between two different cities um, and a lot of people charging this is a very good thing so now we have plugged in at uh, around 20 percent so uh, i'm hoping to get at least a little bit better charging speed but so far the charging speed is not showing up for me unfortunately so what we are looking at right now is i don't know if you guys can see it um 53 so this car should be doing at least 65 to 70 at this state of charge um so i'm not sure if it is the stall there or maybe a different stall would be faster um i can try and see but what i want to do is just to stay at one place just so that i know exactly how much i've been paying for this so right now it is you know calculating here for me so i want to make sure that uh that, that we get the, the, the pricing, right? Because that's all this, this is all about, right? Finding out if the pricing is better now or before, and if it makes sense to charge with the new system, let's say. What I also love are these solar panels that they have installed. Um, number one, it protects you from rain when you're plugging in. And number two, it always provides a little bit of power from the sun, and especially on days like this, and especially in Alberta, that is a very sunny place, uh, that makes sense. So these are all brand new units that uh, Electrify Canada has installed here, and they are manufactured by BTC Power. So there is how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, six units, all brand new. Um, and they seem to be working okay. Let's just have a look one more time, see if we are doing anything better. Oh, now we are at 74, there we go. So this maxes out around 78 was the highest I ever got, so not too bad. Okay, at least I know it's working. It's just the battery was cold. So this is another gripe, right? Um, when it comes to DC fast charging, batteries need to be super warm. Um, today is not a very warm day. It's around 10 degrees. It is sunny, but it's not warm and it's really windy. So when I was driving here, a lot of wind was being pushed inside of the battery because it does have battery cooling both through air as well as liquid. So, you know, you have that uh, uh, negative side to days like this that are very windy. So, but anyways, it is at 74, at least that. I am happy. Um, and then we will see what sort of money is going to cost us so so far it's cost us two dollars 88 cents yeah still doing 74 75. oh i can't wait until i get myself a new car that has battery preconditioning then charging is going to be super simple and super easy let me show you guys a little bit more of the setup here so we have uh, four power units here um, each power unit is rated for 600 amps so we've got four of those powering six chargers. So not a very, not a bad setup, right? So I gotta say, when they do it like this, they do it right and it works. 
um, and uh, it's kind of predictable. You, you know what you're going to get when you do show up, which is really, really nice. There's supposed to be a new station opening up in Edmonton where I live. Also, Electrify Canada has not opened yet, but I'm hoping the setup will be similar to this. It would be nice if it was like that. Quick update here, pulling 74, 75, oh, 76. So we're at the max speed that uh, my Kia Soul EV can take. And as you guys can see, all of them are the Hyper 350s. All of these are. So if you have an electric car that can uh, do those kind of speeds, uh, this location is perfect. Time for a quick uh, charging update here. Um, we have now dropped off from our 78 peak. That's what we got, 78 was the highest. We are now, it cost us $11.52. We've been here 21 minutes or so. And then we have put in, uh, it's so hard to see, 25 kilowatt hour. So, usually what happens is this. With a car like the Kia Soul EV, older technology, you know, not as uh, quick charging as you would want it to be, 52% is when it starts dropping off, 52. So usually what I suggest to most people when they have a car like this, or if you have the Kona, which has the same battery architecture and same charging curve, um, plug your car in until 52, unplug 52, 53, go to the next uh, charger, you're looking at about 150 kilometers range if you're on the highway, and then you can go again 50, 50, 50. Then you maximize your charging, you're not sitting around. But today, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna go all the way to 80, because a lot of people just feel more comfortable going to 80, they wanna have more range, so we'll see how much that costs. And again, compare the old pricing versus the new. Charging has been completed. We put in 41.5 kilowatt hours into the battery, which took us 43 minutes for a total cost of $19.68. So this works out to, as Electrify Canada has said, 48 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, I am a plus, uh, past plus member with Electrify Canada, so I do get a discount if you were not a past plus member. Well, it's so hard to say. Uh, and then you would be paying 70 cents per kilowatt hour, which is just tremendously expensive. So um, if you are planning road trips, just pay the seven bucks, become a member. It's going to save you money. All right, so now let's have a look at the old days prior to the switch. I charged on the same charger um, in Red Deer, Electrify Canada, back in December of last year when it was still time-based. And again, I was a Plus, Pass Plus member, which at that time, it cost me 21 cents per minute to be able to charge my car. So if we take the same number, 43 minutes, okay, as today, at 21 cents per minute, we would be getting $9.03. So that is a difference of over $10. So it is $10 more expensive to charge on a kilowatt hour basis than it is on a time basis. Now, obviously it is more expensive, but it's not always the case that the stars will align like they did for me, where the charge just goes smoothly. Many times, as users probably already know, who did use Electrify America, Electrify Canada, the chargers are super unreliable in certain places, and that time-based thing could have worked out way more expensive. And I'll explain why. Owners of fast charging vehicles like the Kia EV6, um, the Ionic 5, the Ionic 6, the Taycan, any car that charges quickly, obviously the owners, you know, miss the days when they could just pull up, plug in for a few minutes, pay very little and just continue their road trip, right? But owners of cars like mine, owners of Chevy Bolts, you know, owners of older cars on the road, right? Like not everybody has a brand new electric vehicle that charge slower. Um, for us, sometimes it actually costs quite a lot of money to charge based on the time rates, simply because we were stuck at the charger for quite a significant amount of time. And also, um, the chargers, like I said, from Electrify Canada, America, are not exactly reliable. Sometimes you would pull up and you would only get 20 kilowatt, sometimes even less than that. But since it was the only charger or, you know, in that area or that town or whatever, you would be stuck waiting there to get enough 
to go to the next place, right? So then the time-based, it didn't really make sense because you would be spending way more money, right? Now, even if it's a 20 kilowatt charging speed, you're still able to pay the same amount of money as you would pay, um, you know, charging quickly. So yes, there's pros and cons and all of that stuff. But, you know, I was always an advocate of um, energy-based pricing simply because it's way more fair. Now, obviously, they should start implementing meters on all of the chargers so we actually know that did we put in that much energy or did the screen just tell us that, right? So this is happening in Europe. I hope it trickles down to the US eventually in Canada where each charger is going to actually have a meter showing us that yes, we put in X amount of energy into our vehicle and that the pricing and the price we're paying makes sense, right? So that would be nice to, to have as the next step in evolution. But yes, undoubtedly it is more expensive. Um, there's no doubt about it. Like even this comparison, it's, it's $10 more to charge the same car. Um, there is no difference in it. There's no better or worse energy. It's just electricity, right? We're not talking about an ice car that can go on premium or regular, regular fuel, right? So yes, it's more expensive, but I think we're getting to the point where I think that there needs to be a bigger push for EV charging infrastructure, especially in places like where I live, it's really hard to find good chargers fast chargers that I actually, you know, help your car get back on the road quicker. So I'm hoping that a lot of these companies that are, you know, charging us more money to charge our vehicles um, are going to invest in the infrastructure, build more chargers, you know, maybe even upgrade the ones that they already have from older technology that is not as reliable to newer technology that is more reliable. So do I mind paying a bit more? No, because most of my charging I do is at home anyway now. Um, so I don't really need to charge outside unless I'm going on a road trip. And when I am going on a road trip, it is still cheaper than driving an ICE car when you're thinking about how much you're paying. Um, but I do think that, um, you know, it's a good thing overall. Um, paying more, yeah, sucks, of course. I wish it was cheaper. But then if I can see that the money goes towards expanding the network, improving the existing infrastructure, and making sure that all of our chargers are reliable, then that's perfect. I'd rather know that I arrive at a place and I'm able to charge and pay a bit more than arrive at a place that might not work and pay just like nine bucks, right? Because the company doesn't care or doesn't make enough money to even care about the infrastructure. So overall, I think we are at the step where we need to pay a little bit more to expand what we currently have and make sure that that coverage expands beyond just some of the centers where people live where electric cars are becoming you know popular and it trickles to other places like for me here in alberta i just want more chargers i wish finally electrify canada would open that charger in in edmonton right so it would make road tripping up to this part easier for a lot of people so that was a quick comparison between the old and then the new ways of paying for our charging there are still some places and still some chargers that charge by the minute um, you can seek those out if you feel like wanting to pay less. But uh, most of them, at least in Canada, are switching to kilowatt hour billing because it just makes more sense, right? So, yeah, more expensive, but what can we do? Let's build this infrastructure. Let's make sure we have enough chargers everywhere. And the only way we can do that is by paying a little bit more. But still, we're paying significantly less money than it is to um, to drive an ICE car for the same distance, right? So, you know, an 80% charge like what I did there for $19 allows me to drive at least 250 kilometers on the highway without a problem. All right, so if you like the video, like it. If you uh, haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It does help the channel and I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. So it would be nice to, to reach that milestone before the summer. Um, and yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. Are you happy with kilowatt billing? Are you happy that we are paying a little bit more? People probably are not happy to pay a little bit more, but can you understand why we need to pay a slightly a little bit more just so that we can expand the networks and make sure charging is everywhere? And uh, do you miss the old, good old days, especially EV6 drivers and Ionic 5 drivers that were at a charger for 15 minutes and paid very little to charge their car on a road trip, right? So, all right, anyways, thanks so much. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye.